Welcome back, everybody, to No Man's Sky. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to continue our journey towards the center of the universe. Uh, but before we get started with that, uh, let's go ahead and do the usual with the fleet, uh, like I did in the last episode. I'm just going to show you where we are currently and then where we are uh, afterwards. So we're sitting at 599 million in terms of our money, and um, we don't have anything. I guess I have a few things. Let's look on the freighter. Yeah, okay. So we don't have anything in the freighter is, is in terms of materials. Um, so I'm going to go through this, and then I'll show you where we are uh, at the end of it. And then we'll probably also need to check our settlement, too. And then after that, we'll get moving towards the center of the universe. Let's do this. All right, so these are the items that we got. Uh, we got a mutated Dream Rush Sprouts, which is actually not a big deal. We'll move that into our exosuit. We got a rare West Wart Nuts. Also not a big deal in terms of money. And we got a box of Precious Bugs, which is 1.1 million. Definitely the best out of all of those things. Uh, we will also sell these and these. And I think we want to keep... Oh, uh, yeah, we want to sell all this stuff too. I think we want to keep the rest of this. Let's sell these items here. Okay, so that puts us at 612. So basically we made about 13 million off of uh, that last trip-ish. Okay, let me put all this other stuff away and then we'll go see what's going on with our settlement. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, right, let's get in the Minotaur and see if he can do anything significant here. All right, that's not too bad. He has been upgraded a little bit since the last time we used him, so... Nice. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. Greet settlement visitor. All right, allow Colonist Gag to stay. Colonist Gag is a stranger to the settlement. They wish to speak with the Overseer. They present themselves as a milliner of some renown. They feel they have much to offer us. Removes hostile spy suspected. Adds feature professional milliner and population growth. But it costs us a little more money. I don't even know what a milliner is, but it sounds like something we probably need. So let's do it. One new citizen has joined the settlement. The settlement is running smoothly. The overseer is free to explore the universe. The administration terminal will, will alert you when required. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the deets here. All right, so we only have two negative effects at the moment. Happiness is 30%. We're making... <laughs> we're 10, we're still 10 million in debt, but, uh, clear debts to restore production. Can I just like pay that off or no, I don't think so. All right. We need to probably start making decisions, more decisions, more economic decisions, um, so that we can make a little bit more money. We're not quite at the point where we're in the, the red yet. We're, st I mean, in the black yet, we're still in the red. So the next few decisions that we make are going to be more for financial purposes. Okay. Um, are we in the process of still building something? I think this was the last thing that we built. What is this place? Like a generator room? Power room? Looks like it. Okay. I 
Alrighty. So, let's um bring back our freighter here. And, oh, you know what? Damn it, I didn't need to do that. I could have just teleported from our room over here. Oh, well. Okay, so we're done here, right? Yep, we're done. Okay, we shall continue our journey towards the center. Um, and I think we probably want to do that in our starship. So let's head over to our starship. Um, okay, so we're still pretty close back to the center. Uh, or not the center, but the systems that are closest to the center that we've been to so far. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to Galactic Core and there we go. And we're going to follow this line. Wait a minute. Is that going the right direction? The Galactic Core is that way. So we're here, and the core is there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. But I guess why I'm a little confused is it looks like the line starts going that way. Okay, well, let's just, um, let's warp to here. This is a yellow system. A Yaks, uh, Yaksa system. How very interesting. Ooh, yellow and pink. Cool. All right, we got uh, some kind of message thingy coming in here, so let's see what's going on. No, we don't. Never mind. Okay. Thought it said data injection sequence. This is a yellow and pink system. Okay, so we've got the first five rows there. Let's, let's start filling out um, our inventory. And uh, we'll check the multi-tool here. It's a big one, but it's only a C-class. And we were looking for a couple of things for our starship, too. What was it? Like a better, um, better module for the phase beam, I think it was. We're, we're already S-class for the infra knife. So I think it was mostly that, right? All right, let's see if he's got anything for phase beams. He's got an S-class infra knife and a hyperdrive, but we don't need those things. Okay. Uh, were we looking for some stuff for our multi-tool as well? I don't think so. I think we got this pretty decked out at this point. Uh, what about our exosuit? Pretty sure these are um, anomaly items. So yeah, I think we're in pretty damn good shape on the exosuit too. I think that's an 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 anomaly item as well. Okay, well, then yeah, um, at the moment, anyway, I think phase beam is what we're mostly looking for here. 
Let's call in our freighter and do a scan of the system. Okay, so we have, looks like six planets. Excuse me. Okay, that's an overgrown planet with aggressive signal, uh, sentinels, magma planet, decaying nuclear planet, desolate planet, airless planet, and an erupting planet. They're all pretty nasty. Okay, so I don't think there's anything in this system we're interested in. Let's do a quick save here. And then we'll head out and jump to the next area. Okay, so Galactic Core. I guess that's as far as we can go because the line doesn't go that further. No, we can go further than that. Hmm. Wonder why the line stops there. All right, we have a freighter battle. Let's look at the ship. So this is a Star Destroyer style ship. It's not a very big one though. Yeah, you know what? I don't I don't think I care. I think we're going to be stick with what we have. If it was one of the big ones, I'd go after it, but I do not want to have to rebuild my base again. Just don't feel like doing it. So we're going to skip this. About at this point in time, the only th the only time I would consider changing is if we found a large e either battleship or star destroyer that's an S class. Otherwise, there's just I don't see any point in going through all the blood, sweat, and tears to change it over yet once again. Because uh, last time I checked, I don't think you can uh, switch your copy your base over. It didn't didn't work for me the last time I tried it. So. I don't know if they remove that from the game or if I'm doing something wrong, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, exosuit upgrade. We'll upgrade that part there. Grab the thingies. Check for phase beam S class module. There we go. All right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, exosuit. Okay, so this does 92% heat dispersion and 27% damage. Um, it'll replace this one. So we'll melt that one down, move that one there, and there we go. So uh, unless we wanted to See, look, take a look at this real quick. Yeah, it's B-class. Unless we wanted to try and continue buying S-class modules and seeing if they're better than the ones we currently have, uh, we're pretty much maxed out on uh, our ship at the moment, I think. Let's just take a look and see what's docked here. Those ships are almost identical, and they're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Not my flavor of ship. Sorry, but uh, yeah. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Let's just see what the ship is and what class it is. Because you know what? The thing is, is doing the battle. Oh, this ship is like missing part of its hull. What the heck, man? Um, even if we do the battle, we, we still don't get the ship for free. We still have to pay for it, so... I don't know, maybe we get a discount or something? Or we can choose their 
reward instead, but at this point in our playthrough, the reward's just not really that big of a deal. Oh, I guess I could have just used my scanner to see what level it is, but I forgot all about that. That's right. We'll just talk to the commander here. Offer to buy the freighter. It's an A-class, but it's a really tiny Star Destroyer style, so not really interested. Okay. And yeah, by the way, I know that they came out with yet another update. It's like the fourth update they come out with since I started this series. But I don't care at this point, you know, I, I want to just, I want to accomplish my goal, which is to get to the center of the galaxy before I even mess around with new updates. We're going to be very focused from here on out until that goal is accomplished. I don't know how long it'll take. Hopefully not too long. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at with all that. Okay, so um, once again, we'll call our freighter to us and we'll do a quick scan. Just, you know, because we're also on the lookout for potential planets that we might want to, you know, set up our permanent planet side base at. I wonder if we would maybe be further ahead just to warp the freighter itself. I think it's probably more expensive to do it that way, but it might save us a little time. I don't know. Four planets. Fungal mo uh, toxic, rather. Desolate. Charred. And boiling. Yeah, those don't sound like friendly places. Okay. Yeah, let's just warp the freighters. If we run out of fuel, then we'll go back to the starship. Okay, so uh, once again, we want to... Where's the center? There it is. Okay, so... Lactic core. Hyperdrive has no fuel. Oh! Never mind then. I guess we will use our ship, our starship, as opposed to our... Um, to make, we need storm crystals for that. We have storm crystals actually, so we just need to make some antimatter. Or we could make those. How many storm crystals do we have? That would be in crafting, whoops. Oh, we got lots of storm crystals. Those are worth a lot of money, too. Okay, yeah, let's just, uh, we'll make some more, more fuel. So, we'll make an antimatter, and we'll make one of these. Let's just see how far we can get on one of those. Okay, galactic core. Oh, I've, I'm sorry. I forgot to add the fuel to the uh, to the en to the engine itself. Um, so what are we looking at? We're looking at interstellar scanner. This guy. All right. So that fills it all the way up. Good. Here we go again. Galactic core. So we can go to there. Oh, so that is out of jump range. For the freighter, anyway. Oh, out of jump range, right. Which is different than out of jump fuel. Okay, so we'll go to this place. I, I suppose we should look and see what our the range of our freighter drive is compared to the range of our starship and use whichever one can go further. Okay, so let's do a scan first. Uh, 
A rainy planet with aggressive sentinels. A flame ruptured planet. A columned planet. An icy planet. And a toxic planet. Not interested. Okay, so let's look at something here. If we go to our freighter, our warp drive range is 808.7 light years. Our starship is 1469. Oh yeah, we definitely need to use the starship and we'll just call the freighter to us. Okay, now we know. Now we know. Okay, let's get an upgrade. Grab this. I saw one sitting over here too, didn't I? Oh, maybe I didn't. Check the multi-tool. Class C. Okay. And off we go. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I uh, jumped to another uh, system, uh, Yaz Bilden, and there's nothing special here. Went to the state. Uh, actually, there's no station here at all because it's Green Star System. Um, none of the planets looked interesting or anything like that. Um, and then I got to thinking about something. Um, we're still 678,189 light years <laughs> away from the center of the galaxy. It doesn't even look like we've moved at all if you look at the map in the upper left hand corner. And so my ship can jump about 1,400 and some odd light years. So if we take 600 and just, let's just do 678,000 and divide that by 1,400, that's 484 jumps, uh, max jumps to get to the center of the galaxy. <laughs> just... Oh my goodness, that just shows you how enormous this game is. So, I mean, that's going to take so long. I can't believe how long that's going to take. And I can't, you know, I can't just do episode after episode of nothing but me jumping there because, of course, that's going to get boring for everybody. So, I'm wondering if maybe what we ought to do is roll the dice again with, uh, with, black hole and see if we can find a black hole that will get us a little closer than I mean the black hole that we went through to get to this area is the closest that I've ever been um, but it's still so far away that it's it's ridiculously far away <laughs> so oh maybe this is a red star system I don't know what it is but anyway um so what I'm thinking is why don't we why don't we do another jump We'll just go, okay, so that's out of range. That's out of range. Back up just a little bit. We went a little too far there, didn't we? Okay, this is a three-star Corvax system. Let's jump to here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another base computer down on a planet. Because this is still, you know, the closest that we've ever been. So we can always come back to this point if we have to. And then I think we need to maybe try and hit some more black holes or something. Because that's just that's just going to take so long, you know? I mean, even for me just to, to play the game, you know, off camera and keep jumping and keep jumping, that's still going to take, would take hours and hours and hours, you know? Um... And I'm not saying I won't do that if that's what it is absolutely going to take, but it just seems like a lot. Energy surge, portal ley line, something or other. Okay, so doesn't that, isn't that mean like um, a, uh, whatchamacallit? A portal? Yeah, portal ley line. So let's go check the station. So we got another upgrade there. 
Grab the nav data, check the bolt eye tool. It's an A-class, kind of nice looking one too, but I wouldn't even consider switching to a new mold tool unless it's S-class. Okay, so let's go scan the planets now in this system and see what we got here. Here, we can even just scan this one the old-fashioned way. a human planet with aggressive sentinels. Fun place. Okay, we have an erupting planet, the human planet we just looked at, an acidic planet, and an abandoned planet. Okay. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter where we put a base down. Because uh, it's it's not like an actual base. It's just going to be our base computer so we can get back to this point. Let's move towards this planet. Oh, no, that's the acid planet. I don't want to go to the acid planet. Then we got to deal with corrosion. I don't want to go to the human planet because then we got to deal with nasty sentinels. Let's try this one. Yeah, abandoned moon. We'll do that one. Oh, moon of gamma? Moon of Light Gamma? What's this one? Erupting Planet. Yeah, I still think this one's probably going to be the least hostile. Ceaseless Drought. What we're going to do is put a base computer down here. Okay, so we're going to call this one um, Center 2. And each each planet that we put a base like this down on that's closer, we'll just keep incrementing the numbers. So the next one will be Center 3 and Center 4, etc. Okay, so now let's go to the galaxy map. And we want to set this to a black hole system. There we go, okay. So it looks like it's gonna be here at this yellow star system. Let's go check it out. And if it takes us further out, then we just... Well, I mean, we could either come back here and keep going closer and try it again later, or... I mean, the thing about the black holes, it could come out anywhere, so... Probably we just keep searching for black holes. Um, from wherever we left off, you know? Alright, so there doesn't appear to be a station in this system. I didn't actually pay attention to where it said we were. Okay, so we have a an irradiated a scarlet with the dissonance metallurgic vermilion globe but it's got aggressive sentinels of course calcified and columned all right none of those really sound attractive okay so Pop back out into the ship here and see if we can get a feel for where we're actually at here in relation to the rest of the galaxy. We're actually, we're actually not very far away from, from where we were before. 
I mean, hardly moved at all on the galactic scale. Well, that was kind of a lame black hole. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm being a noob. We didn't go through the black hole. We just jumped to the system itself. Duh. Okay. Um, right. Sorry. It's getting late. I gotta go to bed. So, all right. Where is the black hole then? We gotta look around for it. It's usually not too hard to spot. Let's move towards this planet. This might be that Vermilion planet with the aggressive sentinels. No, that's an irradiated planet. Okay. We'll turn around and look. This is a... Hmm. Is this a black hole system or did we have, do we have to go further? So I'm not seeing one. That doesn't mean it's not here. Sometimes it can be hard to spot. But doesn't it like kick you out near the black hole when you travel to it? Or are all of these places I'm going to, do they all have black holes and I'm just not seeing it? Because like I said, I've, the last couple of times I did this, I I set black hole on the map, I jumped to the place it said, and there was a black hole there, so. Oh, wait a minute. You know what, though? I think I went and talked to What's-His-Face on the, on the anomaly and asked for him. Uh, what, you know, the little geck dude. I can't think of his name. Polo. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, here, since we're here... So I'm guessing that, let's see, torrid, irradiated, abandoned, lifeless, rocky, caustic. So I'm guessing that if we go, if we use the map filter, it'll eventually lead us to one. But if we talk to Polo, he probably will tell us exactly where to go. Maybe. I don't know. Let's just give that a try. Since we're out and about, we might as well go to the station and... Get our suit upgrade and check the multi-tool. Meh. C-Class. Ask for black hole coordinates. There we go. There it is. Okay. Enter free look. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I, I figured it would be marked like that. Okay. Yeah, I just forgot I had to go talk to Polo first. So I think what I'd like to do is roll the dice a few times with some black holes to see if they can get us a little bit closer. Um, and, you know, if it doesn't, then I'm just going to have to make over 400 jumps. <laughs> yeah, you can see the black hole right when you get there. Okay, let's do the station first. Um, all right. Let's just finish out the last row of tech slots, I guess. Comforting loop needle? Okay, if you say so. Okay, we have an overgrown, a desert, a flourishing. Okay, flourishing planet with no aggressive sentinels. And a lifeless planet. Zuvalin 28. 
No, 18, sorry. I mean, that might be worth taking a look at, I guess. It's a gold, golden looking planet from here. Hmm. Yes, it's definitely a golden planet. It's uh, really stuttery though. Like the frame rate's really bad. Was that? Is that like a new style outpost or something? Trippy. Seeing I can fly into the eyeball here. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, um, one thing that I didn't... Whoa, there's more of those things. One thing that I didn't notice is if there's any oceans on this planet. I don't want to, I don't want to be on a planet with no water. Let's fly out a ways from it a bit and then turn around and take a look at it. Nope, I don't want to trade with you. Go away. Yeah, see, I don't know if there's any water on this planet. Sure doesn't look like it. But even if I did like it, which I kind of don't, I was getting some, some weird graphics stuttering business going on there. All right, so, dude, get out of my business here. The black hole was back by our freighter, so let's head back that direction. Trippy. Okay, let's see where we are. Alert. Navigational data received. Um, we're not really any closer to the center. We're just now kind of more down in the southwest part of the galaxy. 672. Yeah, so that didn't gain us anything significant, really. Okay, well, I could do one of two things. I could either ask Polo for another black hole. I don't know if he if he can if he keeps giving those out left and right, or if there's a timer on him. Or we could go. We could go back where we were before and just keep moving uh, towards the center for, you know, several more jumps and then try and find a new black hole and see if there's one that gets us closer. We'll do a planet scan. We'll go to the station, do our thing there. And that's awfully loud. <laughs> Jeez. And then we'll talk... We'll talk to Polo one more time and see if he sends us to a new black hole. If, if he doesn't, if he sends us right back to this one, then we know we're going to have to move closer to the center um, before we ask him again. Okay, Torrid, supercritical, bleak, bountiful, new Lodyar, damp, And temperate, but with aggressive sentinels. This bountiful planet is probably going to look like the one that we're already on. Because it's kind of the same thing. Blue blue water, red, red land. But, I mean, it's probably worth taking a quick look at, I suppose. Yeah, my, my frame rate is like really tanking here. I don't know why. I don't think anything else is going on on my computer at the moment. 
Okay, lots of water on this planet. So it's got blue terrain and deep purple trees and orange ocean. It's pretty interesting colors. Kind of has almost a a rainbow sheen. Yeah, there's a little rainbow kind of going that way. It's a neat little effect. Okay, well, I mean, it's kind of neat, but it's... It's not like totally grabbing my attention though. I like the look of this planet from space, but I think this is the one that has the aggressive sentinels. We're out of starship fuel. Uh, where's our luminance engine? Anti-gravity well. It's it's this, isn't it? Crimson core. Oh no, luminance. That's um that's our pulse drive. Right. So grab open one of these. Let's grab some tritium out of here, too. Technology there. Mammoth. Nope, get out of here. I love the color of the ocean on this planet. Oh, this is a damp planet. Oh. So this isn't the one that has the aggressive sentinels. Yeah, sure sure is a pretty blue, but the rest of the land's kinda ugly looking. Let's see if this sends us to a new one. Okay, um... Oh, wait a minute. So this is saying it's in the next system over? Hold on a second. So there's two systems right next to each other with black holes. Okay. Okay, right, we're just going to go right through it. Urquinix system. Urquinics. Traveled 796,644 light years. Ah, uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> We're way out on the western rim now. <laughs> okay, um. 
You know what, though? It's showing me another black hole right over here. Interesting. Since it's right there, let's just try it one more time. Yohashi system. Hundred and ninety eight thousand, so we didn't actually travel very far that time, comparatively. Yeah. <laughs> we just went a little bit further north on the rim. Oh, it doesn't even give me the option for a black hole now. Okay, well, I think what we'll do then is um Oh, was I um Oh, that's cool. I, I've looked at that filter before, but I don't usually pay much attention to it. Um, you know something? I think that... Alright, where's the center? Well, we can just travel there this way. <laughs> Is it actually moving the indicator thingy? Oh my gosh, can we like just sit here and do this? I mean, I know we wouldn't actually be going to there. Yeah, you know what? The little circle thing is actually moving. So what if I just do this and go all the way to the center and just look at it? That seems kind of hacks. I mean, you you could you could do that though. I guess if you wanted to. <laughs> Eighty-five thousand nine hundred thirty-nine light years. All right. Well, shoot. I think what we need to do is go back to our that little uh, base that we set up that we named. Might as well go to the station and get the stuff. You know that we named um, Center Two, and then. I'm just going to keep jumping towards the center, and every now and then what I'll do is I'll stop and um, go talk to Polo and find a black hole. Because I'm, I'm not really sure what else to do. I mean, you know, if there's a, a better way to do this than the way that I've been doing it. I guess the Corvax guys don't have the the thing there. There's a B class. Okay, so yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Let's um We'll go back to that base computer. And I'll just keep traveling towards the center in, in the normal fashion. And every once in a while I'll try a new um black hole. If you guys have other suggestions, um, I'm all ears. Definitely interested in hearing what you guys have to say about this too. But otherwise, you know, I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm not going to keep doing episodes of me just doing that though too. So what I'll probably do is do, do a lot of this traveling off camera and then bring you guys back with updates as I get closer. And, you know, if something if something very interesting happens um you know get that capture that on camera so yeah center two is where we want to go and i think we'll just kind of leave it w at, at that so all right guys so thanks everybody for hanging out today hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share the video and we'll catch you in the next episode Bye bye